Owen sat at the checkout counter, staring blankly at his math homework. His pencil slowly doodled on his homework, sketching a smiling half-robotic girl. Sometimes he just felt so useless. It had been a month since he had seen Bethany, and Keel seemed to be getting more and more antsy, being trapped in a non-fictional world and going to school. But what could Owen do? Bethany wouldn't take his calls, and it's not like he really knew what to say anyway. Sorry I didn't find your dad, and that magic things he's trapped in every single book in the library? This was the problem. Owen was just the sidekick, maybe not even that. At least Robin knew how to fight, and he had his own comic sometimes. Owen's comic would be all about Keel and Bethany rescuing him because he bumbled into some new trap every issue. And it'd be cancelled after, like, the third one. Maybe the second. He sighed, sketching some hair on the half-robot girl. If only there was something he could say to Bethany to cheer her up, make her realize that they were still on her side. Even if they never jumped into another book, Bethany was still his friend and he wanted to be there for her, to help her. But how? Someone placed a pile of books on the counter in front of him, and Owen looked up to, from his doodling to see a boy a few years younger than him be looking annoyed. Owen smiled politely. Do you have your library card? He asked. Why, there's so many Sherlock Holmes books now! The boy said, glaring at Owen. He's everywhere, I don't get it! Owen shrugged. I think he's just popular. Things go in waves sometimes. But look at this! The boy said, sliding a book over to Owen. Since when is he even in the Bad Time Orphan Bunch series? Owen raised an eyebrow and took the book. Bad Time Orphan Bunch. Life becomes unbearable. A fun series, but Owen hadn't read it in a while. There's no Sherlock Holmes in this, he said, holding the book out to the boy. Open it, the kid said, pushing it back. Owen sighed and turned to the first page. I hope you're sitting down. I hope you've had your fill of fairy tales and nursery rhymes and stories where good conquers evil, or good sits down with evil over tea and talks out evil's problems. Because this is not that. This is an altogether different thing than that. Good does not win. Good doesn't even show up on time for the fight. Good, my beloved readers, decided to stay home and take a nap instead. So get a blanket, you're going to need it to hide under. Get a teddy bear or your mother or whatever it takes to keep you reading well past when the fear reaches up your spine and into your brain, teasing out the terror. This is that kind of story. The kind of story I'm shaking just considering telling you. This is the story of 14 children, each one an orphan, though somehow they formed a family. A bunch, if you will. Like bananas, or a random amount of things. That's what these orphans were, a random amount of things. Let me introduce them to you. Here we are, the home, the ramshacklest of ramshackle houses, officially called the Sunshine Home for Happy Kids, but known to our orphans as the House of Moldy Porridge. You don't want to know why, but I'm going to tell you. Here, I'll open the door for you. Walk on inside and... Eh? I've got this. This is odd. There is a boy in a mask, a mask adorned with a question mark, and he seems to be wearing an odd sort of hat and coat. He's not one of the orphans, though. Who might this... Doyle Holmes, the boy says, not sticking out his hand. Great, 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 great grandson of Sherlock Holmes. I solved the mystery of these orphans' missing parents. They've all been returned to home and the missing diamonds were recovered. But, but you weren't even supposed to learn of the diamonds for several books yet. This isn't how this tale is supposed to go. Don't worry, I know the part you played in this too. This Doyle boy says. The police are on their way. Don't bother running, I can track you anywhere. The police? What? Sirens blare in the air behind me, and I turn to find several cars pulling up at once. Is this truly the end, before any of it began? Um, this is not how the book was supposed to go. Owen turned the page and his eyes widened. The next page was blank. So were the next 250 pages. That's not the only one that's like that, the boy said in disgust. This masked Sherlock Holmes grandson guy shows up in a ton of books. Not fantasy or science fiction, just the regular kind. Jason Scout, International Spy of Pancakes, Robin of Sherwood Lake Subdivision, and a bunch more. He sighed. Is this some kind of stupid crossover? Because I never liked his first book anyway. What first book? 
Owen asked, barely able to breathe. The Baker Street or something or other, the boy said. Anyway, this is all lame. I don't even want them. But you should complain to the companies about these. The writers? Owen asked absently, not even looking up. Whatever. Tell them crossovers are terrible and no one wants them. I just want the orphan bunch. And with that, he left, still mumbling to himself. Owen was out of his chair instantly, practically running to the children's section. He scanned the shelves for a moment, then yanked out the book he was looking for. The Baker Street School for Irregular Children. He flipped it over and quickly read the back. The great, 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 great grandson of Sherlock Holmes has inherited a family school named after Sherlock's Irregulars, a group of children who used to help the great detective solve his mysteries. But Doyle Holmes wants to do more than just help troubled children learn from their mistakes. He's ready to solve the biggest mysteries, capture the most dangerous crooks, and share his adventures with his trusted computer, Watson. The cover confirmed it. There was Doyle Holmes, a boy in a Sherlock Holmes coat and hat, wearing the question mark mask. The criminals don't know his true identity, so they can never see him coming, the cover said. Wow, yikes, that does not sound good. But somehow, this Doyle Holmes character was getting into other books, other stories, and solving mysteries, apparently before these stories even start. How was that possible? It wasn't like he, Bethany, and Kiel had ever visited this book, or it, so at least it wasn't their fault. But still! Wait a second, what was he thinking? This was his chance! Not only to distract Bethany from what had been happening with her father, but also to show that he wasn't completely useless! Maybe that'd be Owen's thing, being the research guy! Finding books with characters who were escaping their stories, and he'd send Bethany in to stop them! Maybe give her all the plans and cool gadgets, then make jokes when they came back! Maybe every so often a hug so Bethany knew he cared! Maybe this was his thing all along, to be the one finding important things for her to investigate. Or maybe this was just some stupid marketing attempt to get people reading the Baker Street series, since it looked like only one book in the series ever came out, and that was years ago. Either way, he'd take it to Bethany, and she'd have to check it out, with him and Kiel too. Maybe this was the start of them doing some good now, instead of just having some cool adventures and enjoying themselves. That thought made Owen feel a bit proud of himself as he carried the Baker Street School for Irregular Children back to the checkout desk where he dialed Bethany's number. A, just a little bit? No, a lot proud. After all, this was completely Owen. He was going to totally get the credit for this. <laughs> Owen shouted into the empty room in the police station in spite of his pounding head. Not again, it can't all be my fault again!